most of life is the trust on being taken seriously. People want to take themselves seriously. What do we mean when we say take themselves seriously? What would be the duality? If you don't take yourself seriously, you take yourself unseriously, right? And what would unseriously be? Do you take yourself in a joyful manner? Do you take yourself lightly? Do you take yourself as unimportant, unimportant, or insignificant in the world? What is the difference between you, Stephanie, and others? Let's talk about that because that is the subject of today's discussion. This is God, your Father. And I know you don't take yourself seriously. I know that you just flow and grow as a trust on process. So you trust on process and not on being static, you see. So if you took yourself seriously, how serious would you be when you said to me, God, I love you very much and I enjoy our partnership, you see? Because you can't take yourself seriously if you are in love, you see. You cannot take yourself seriously if you are in love. So let's talk about the word serious. The word serious, obviously, has a connection to the, that old dog star, Sirius, because the dog star is the god star from a backwards point of view, you see, and so I am the god star. And Sirius is the dog star. And the dog star will dog you repeatedly to try to get you to turn against me, you see. Because all the people who are serious are the ones who think that Sirius is the answer to their prayers. Because if they take themselves serious, they will be in opposition to me, and they will see that I cannot be in partnership with them because they think that opposition means that you have to be one or the other, you see. You have to be a Democrat, or you have to be a Republican, or you have to be a human, or you have to be an alien. Yeah, pretending to be a human, you have to be a figment of your own imagination, you see. And so, all the people who take themselves seriously trust on being a figment of their own imagination. And this was very evident to you yesterday when you came to see, when someone tried to tell you how they perceived you, that you didn't even know if it was true. Because how can you stop in midstream and say, well, this is me, this is me, this is me, this is what I am. I'm the shadow on the wall. And then you take a picture of the shadow on the wall and you say, I'm this tall. And I call myself thus and thus, and I'm this, and I'm that, and I'm the other. And you couldn't figure out how to respond when someone tried to tell you their perceptions of you. You couldn't say, well, that's right, or that's wrong, 
or perhaps I don't understand myself as well as you do. You said, I don't know. I don't know. I have to ask somebody else what they think because I don't know if you're right or wrong because I don't know what I am. You're telling me what I am, but I don't know if it's right or wrong. And this is the song that humanity needs to learn to sing. When others tell you what you are, and they attempt to turn you into a golden idol, you see, because they want you to think that you are so important to them that they have to bow down to the graven image that they have created of you then life is over and you can go boohoo because you are dead you see you're just a photograph in the picture album of somebody's history that they mount on the wall for others to see because they are trusting on being the graven image too. And they want to turn you into a graven image so that the two of you can rest side by side, right? Oh, right. Hey, this is starting to make sense to me today. I mean, beyond the fact that that makes sense because that did happen, but I was thinking when I, what is the point? Why write a book about, to me, I have so much information available at my fingertips. I have all of you at my fingertips to write books, to explain things, etc. But nobody's going to listen, even though it makes perfect sense. And it all fits together. You know, if you start out with the Big Bang and everything comes apart, then everything has to be able to fit back together. You know, it's like rewinding the film. Everything has to fit back together. All the pieces, you take a puzzle and you break it apart on a, on a film, and then you rewind the film, all the pieces jump back together. So everything has to fit together. And if it's not fit, fitting together, then you don't quite have the understanding of, of the picture. And so, God, I was thinking today, why bother? Why bother? Because you can't really understand this until the day that you understand it. You have to find it inside you. And so I was thinking, well, the only importance would be to the people that already understand that. Because in my experience, in my journey, in my story, which of course I don't take too serious because it's a story, but it makes perfect sense. So the fact that it makes perfect sense means I don't have to take it seriously because it takes itself clearly. <laughs> it takes itself as reality. And so what was important to me was that I would find other people that I could resonate with. They would talk. And one of them was Alan Watts. And I loved Alan Watts' sense of humor, the peopling of the world. You know, he understood the duality of it very, very, very well. And he understood the Trinity, actually. He understood it very, very well. And he was able to be who he was and come in and they would pay him to entertain the audience. And uh, they would say, God, you're smart, Alan, but why do you live the way you do? <laughs> you know, <laughs> why don't you become a graven image or a golden idol that we can all bend a knee to? Instead, you just come and amuse us and then you go off and do your own shit. And you're not living up to the model we want you to be. And, this is, and uh, Alan was kind of in his own way, F you, you know, <laughs> there's nothing I have said that says that I have to be your golden idol, you see, or your graven image. And so Alan is process. But listening to Alan was reassuring to me. It's like, it is reassuring to me that somehow you can connect on a level with people who can connect with you. And so that was valuable to me. 
So, but I wouldn't have even cared. I wouldn't even have listened had I not had that experience when I was 28 years old that kicked my butt and twisted me around. So I was no longer focused on Sirius, the dog star. I was focused on the God star. And so it twisted me, turned me completely around and gave me a different point of view. And then I was interested and then I was lonely because I, well, not, yeah, I guess I was felt alone anyway. Because I wasn't really lonely, but I was alone because I had myself for company. And I was the best company I knew, as I said. But, and I suppose that was because I was connected to you and others. But anyway, I appreciated very much my two, I always say that when I retired and I had time to explore, I was looking for the best teachers. And the best teachers I found were Alan Watts and Byron Katie. And I guess the bottom line with both of them was that they didn't take themselves seriously. <laughs> they were not beholden to the dog star. And they, uh, Alan was endlessly amusing and fun. And uh, Byron Katie, of course, I consider her one of the most enlightened people on the planet, listening to her. Um, so she's got a great understanding of, of the, <laughs> I'm not taking myself too serious. Anyway, those two were kind of like a salve on a wound, if you will. And salve on the wound. And I, hey, salvation. I just got that connection. Salvation. When you have a salve for your wound. Hmm. Anyway, so I was just thinking of that today. So in a way, it corresponds to what you say, is that if you're just process, you're not a graven image, then finding other people in process is kind of fun. But part of the process, of course, is just life in general and how you interpret it and and all the other people in your world who are the graven images and da 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 da. And so you always come around. You always come around the circle. And those two always come around the circle. So that's what I appreciate of them. Question for you, dear. If I told you to allow others to hear what we have to say, in a more expansive way, would you be willing to do it? Yeah, but I don't know how. Because, you know, every time I think about it, I think, why bother? Because I'm not the person that people will listen to. I don't have that Alan Watts um, ability to stand up in front of people and and amuse them or to get where he is. He had a very, very, very vast understanding of religion and culture that allowed him to continually bring up metaphors and uh, explain the meaning of all these iconic uh, aspects of religion and, and culture. Right. So you're not Alan Watts. And you're not Byron Katie because she has a totally different way, approach to people than you do. And your approach to people is to say, do it your way. I don't really give a damn <laughs> because you're an eternal being and God has it in hand. And it's not my job to take you by the ring through the, your nose and lead you to the promised land. You have to find it on your own. And that is true, dear, but see, I said, but because there is a, but here and the, but of the joke is me because I see that I take myself too seriously when I think that I am Anything but process. I am process like you. And together, 
we continue to spin around each other in the way that helps us stay happy because I enjoy talking to you and I know you enjoy talking to me and others can't even play this way. They can't play this way. And so we say, well, it's just a good game that we play because we're not serious, you see. We're not the dog star. We're not aliens to the Mother Earth. We are the ones who unearth the truth. We unearth the truth over and over and over again. Because the truth, you see, is the stream of energy that flows through all of reality, right? Yes, I just had a vision of that. The stream of energy that flows through all of reality, I like that. That's the truth. And you can just float on it. You can go with it. Or you can fight it, eh? But what is fighting it? Because you are process. And so the interesting thing is that the nature of process is that it's continually it's continually creating a new shape, if you will. So the waves, the water that flows is continually creating a new particular wave or um, eddy or whatever. It's continually picking up sticks and stones and whatever. And so the total composition, the nature of it is always going to be a little different. And that's the nature of life. Because if it wasn't different, of course, if it wasn't unique, if every snowflake wasn't unique, then it would be mechanical. And it's not mechanical. No. Not mechanical. I am not mechanical and you are not mechanical because this process you see is the process of processing me and so something has to process me and I have to be here to process you and so we process each other you see and we never know what's going to happen because we are both originals. I am the original God of the universe. And you are the original aspect of me that turns to me and says, Hey God, I know you. I know you very well. I know you in the tree and I know you in the bee. I know you because you are the process that processes me. And I say, yes, that is true. I am the process that processes you. And you are the process that processes me. Right? So we are continually in flux. Yes. And that's the beauty of it. It is, you could start out with the Big Bang. It expands and goes out. And then it's always going to fold back together. So it's always going to make sense. So it's always going to make sense. It's always going to be logical. But it's not going to be mechanical. It's not going to be um, always the same. There's always going to be, as Mr. Ryman says, Riemann says, a wild card. And the wild card is that number that he could not pin down. Yes. He was a very, very astute mathematician. And therefore, he understood process. He understood process very well. And he understood that it is not a mechanical universe. And too many people think it is a mechanical universe. And this is what is the limitation of those who are talking about climate change. So you listen to many experts, so-called, and they are experts in their field, who talk about climate change. And they talk about processes, processes, and they talk about systems that interact, and they talk about tipping points, and they talk about this, and they talk about how these things are interrelated in such an intricate way that even they can't figure it all out. But they're convinced that it all 
is mechanical, you see, because this leads to that and that leads to the other. And if you pull this lever, you will never be able to reverse the process, you see. And so they don't understand that I am the process that processes them, and they are the process that processes me. And therefore, everything they see and everything they claim to understand is their effort to process me. And my effort to process them, you see, is to give them a little jolt every once in a while and say, hey, you forgot this, buddy. You forgot this. You didn't see this coming, did you? And they say, wow, we didn't see that coming. There are so many who say, we didn't see it coming. We didn't see the oceans heating up like this. We didn't see that coming. So now we got to process it and come up with an explanation because, you see, we're not just process, we're the processor. And if they see themselves as the processor, that is the graven image, because that's their role is to be the processor, then they cease to be process. And they become stagnant, and they become old, and they turn cold, right? Well, I will accept that since you say it is so. And I could see that there is a kind of um, tendency in humanity to think of themselves as the processor and not the process. But isn't that another duality, process and processor? Well, it is, but it is not a truth. Because a truth is always on the move, you see. A truth is the energy that maintains the reality of you and me. And so the energy has to be on the move, you see. Because if it doesn't move, it would turn stagnant. And so there's nothing outside of the process. There is nothing outside of the process of reality. And therefore, you're not outside the process of reality. Right, I get that. Because the way that I explained it, God, was that these people who often call themselves scientists have limited application of principle, and I could give many examples of that, but they stand outside what they're studying, as if what they're studying exists outside of them. They are the processor of this reality that's outside themselves, but they never stop to think that if it is true, then it is also true for them, and therefore they are subject to those conditions. And therefore, they can't take themselves so serious. Once they realize their process, they can't take themselves so serious. <laughs> this is true. And so, if you are process and I am process, and we are processing each other, you see, then this is the nature of God energy. That God energy will always process you because you are the process of processing me. And so you're not a processor, you are a process. You see, you are the process of processing me, and I am the process of processing you. So what does that mean to you? Well, it means that I, I come back to being kind of static, because if I'm the process of processing you, then you, the fact that there is a you, takes us back to something that exists. Um, however, you could be the process. So, for instance, instead of taking a picture of you, of your shadow on the wall and saying, this is you, God, you are the moving shadow on the wall. And so I am continually another moving shadow on the wall that is processing the moving shadow on the wall. And I can't stand still to do it, because if I stood still to do it, then everything would stand still, because you would have nothing to process, because I would be the graven image. Yes, that is true. 
So we become processing and we become processor because the processor cannot be static, you see. The processor must be in motion because if it were not in motion, it would be a graven image. It would be engraved in stone and all alone because no one could process it anymore. Because in order to process another, the other has to be alive, you see. And you have to be alive because it's a mutuality. Right. Okay. So let us now say that you were to process me in a way that would say, God, you are a reality because reality is truth, you see. And truth is always on the move, and you're always on the move. And you appear to me in a zillion different ways, you see, because you're always on the move. And in order to keep up with you, I have to be on the move. So I have to be on the move in order for us to have this relationship. So I have to be continually flowing with the truth, you see. And so when someone comes to you and they say to you, I want to do what you do. I want to talk to those in heaven. I want to talk to God. I want to just have a pendulum that I can pick up and God can talk to me. Then they will not be able to keep up with me unless they can accept that they are process and not a graven image, you see. And so when someone comes to them and says, well, this is how I perceive of you, whether they consider themselves just a friend or a family member or a medium who picks up clues about people, then they are being processed by you. And you say, well, you're a moving shadow on the wall unless you think that you know it all. And if you know it all, you know all about me, then you are dead, you see, because I am process and I am constantly on the move. And so I can't tell you. When you tell me, I see that you are this or that or the other, that this is true or not. Because I'm on the move. I am processing you. And I don't know what I will do to make you see that I am not a graven image, you see. You can't engrave me on the wall. You can't tell people that I am this or that or the other. Because... That would be a lie. That would be a lie, and I would have to lie in state because you state your own fundamental lack of understanding of yourself, you see, when you try to define me. You cannot define me, and I cannot define you unless I define myself, you see, because in order to keep up with you, in order to process you, I have to be on the move. And if I'm on the move, I'm not static, you see, and I can't be engraved in stone. And so the nature of the organic life we live is that it is organic, you see. It is the process of the organ that will continue to play many a day and does not stop to say, well, I'm tired today, I'm tired today. And so the organ will play. And it doesn't need a player, you see, because the organ is the process of reality. And the organ that is the process of reality is your heart, you see, and it will beat. And it will beat. And it will keep the beat of the feet that say, 
I am processing you today. And so at this moment, you and I are processing each other. And we keep pace with each other because we say, I am not engraved in stone today. So those people who want to talk to me like you do, but find it very difficult, or else they imagine that they're talking to me, as they imagine me to be, are taking themselves too seriously. And they don't understand that you have to let go of the bedpost, you see. And you have to go with the flow. You have to go with the flow. Because the flow you see is you. You are the flow. You are the flow of God energy that comes through me and comes back to me through you, you see. Yep, I see. So let us go together hand in hand and to the promised land. And those who hear what we say today will be the ones who know that they've been looking for us. They've been looking for us because they want to play too. They want to play in the godly way and not in the serious way. And so if you can play in the godly way, you won't be so serious, you see, and you won't say, well, I must be a Syrian from the dog star because the dog star appeals to me. You will say, I must be a process of reality because every day I get up and see that something has changed. And if I was static, you see, if I was just a thing, I would always see the same thing because I would have no ability to process reality. Right, God? Thank you. I enjoyed this conversation today. I do wish, I guess there is a part of me that wishes that more people would listen and understand. Um, not just the ones that already understand, but that others would be able to maybe just sit with it, and think about it, and say, hey, maybe there's more to it. You know, maybe 99.9% .9 of the population that I see around me is not picking up on this. They're just not picking up on this. So they're the ones that are going to, well, and then they hate me when I say this because they can't pick up on it. So if I say, so they're the ones that are going to go away, they think that it's very negative and stuff because they don't understand what we're talking about because they don't listen to it. They can't figure it out. So they will interpret it by the light of the dog star. Yes, <laughs> a good way to say it. They will interpret it by the light of the dog star and not by the light that shines from me. Because you see, I am the God of the universe. And I don't take myself seriously because I'm not from Sirius, you see. And you are my daughter. And I love you and you love me. And you don't take yourself so seriously either. Because you say, well, it's all a story today. But it's a story that is written very, very, very well. With much attention to detail. Because it makes a lot of sense. And all the other stories that people tell me don't make so much sense as this one does. The stories that the scientists tell about climate change is missing. Important details, you see. It's missing some trust on the truth. They cannot perceive the truth, you see, until they let go of their graven image and become process. And, of course, the others, the climate deniers, the religious ones, who say, well, it's going to be Armageddon today and God's going to take us up to heaven because we're the, we're the people that trust on God, have not a clue that they can't do what they want to do because they take themselves too seriously. They got to lighten up, you see. And the thing about that dog star is its light is very, very faint, but it captivates the attention of those who trust on good and evil. 
it captivates their attention. And the ability to give up the bite out of the apple of good and evil is very hard for those people who trust on themselves as the graven image and that others have to bow a knee, bend a knee to them. They think that they belong to the throng of people who have it wrong, and they do. They belong to the throng of people who have it wrong. And so what does that tell you, Stephanie? Well, it tells me that I belong to the throng of people that have it wrong. Because I was just saying that 99.9% .9 of the people in the world don't uh, listen to what I have to say. So if what we're saying here is the truth, if it's true, then they are clinging to what is not true. So wouldn't that mean that they are wrong? And wouldn't it mean that I am clinging to them because, for some reason? No, it doesn't mean that. We'll talk about that later. So I love that you raise these questions because it allows me to process you. And you can then process me because we'll talk about it. You see the difference that I see when I process you. All right, God. Looking forward to it. Thanks for the convo today. I better go paint. Yes, you better go paint. Because you're painting the world, you see. You're painting the world with me. We're painting a new vision of reality. Right. <laughs>